What's up for a soap YouTube fam? Ask and you shall receive. A lot of y'all have been hitting me up for a more detailed video in how I make cold processed soap. Sit back, kick your shoes off, and relax because we finna jump right in. Alrighty, now we're gonna be mixing my lye and water. This is lye. It's caustic, it heats up. It's dangerous, so just take precautions. And those precautions are a mask, gloves, and eye shields, and long sleeves. I don't have long sleeves, so I'm just gonna put on my lab coat. Okay, everybody, I'm suited and booted. <laughs> Alrighty, first things first. You wanna make sure you're in a well-ventilated area with a window open or a fan going. We have my water. And we have my lye. When you're mixing lye, you're going to always pour the lye into the water. Never water into lye. Always lye into water. Get you a spoon available. Okay, we're gonna slowly pour our lye in. Give it a quick stir. Um, a lot of people are intimidated by making cold processed soap because of this bad boy right here. And I'm, I just want to say it's, it's really nothing to be afraid of. You just want to be careful with it. And I personally treat this like some hot cooking grease. Like literally, stand back, extend that arm, and get the stirring. Don't breathe in the fumes. Treat that like some grease. It's hot. It's going to pop you. It's not going to pop you for real, but... I'm just saying, treat it like some hot grease, baby. It's, it's nothing to be scared of. You just want to stay back. Okay, so I'm finna get started up for real. Okay, guys, let's get started. So like I mentioned before, my liquid oils and my hard, now melted oils. I'm just gonna combine the two. I'm gonna make sure I scrape the remaining oil out of this bowl because every little bit counts because we weighed it. So it needs to be accounted for. Have all my oils. What's the temperature of my oils? So we're at a 92. And the temperature of my lye is like at a 91. I did let my lie cool down a, a lot. Just cause I wanted to be able to take my time with this soap. I haven't made this soap in a while. And this is the me, myself and I soap. So I just want to take my time with it. So I'm, I'm soaping at a lower temperature. Okay, now I'm going to stick blend. Once I place my bell into the, the soap, I'm gonna get, tap the bottom to get any air bubbles out, and mix it. And when you're stick blending, you're gonna blend in pulses. You don't wanna overheat your stick blender. Now the goal when you're mixing is to get this to trace. 
is is when you lip lift up your stick blender and you'll see squiggling lines on top of the cell batter. Clearly, I just started mixing, so I'm nowhere near trace. So I'm gonna continue to mix. You'll feel it get thicker. You'll feel it get hotter as you mix. Okay, let's quickly pause because I wanted to add this in from Google. I got this from um, Soap Queen, which is where I get a lot of my tips from if I'm having trouble with a batch. And it just mentioned that the temperature for most soapers is between 120 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. It's really personal preference on the temperature and how your oils and butters react at a certain temperature. So definitely follow 120, 130 if you're starting out and just try to keep your oils and your lye 10 degrees from each other. I'm just going to lift my bail up here. So you can see how well it sticks to the stick blender. You don't see any separation of any oils or any oil streaks on my bail of my stick blender. So if I wanted to, I could pour right here. And I think I am because... I still have to add my essential oils and I still have to add my colorant to a half of this. So this is a good stopping point for me. See the squigglies? That's a light trace. Um, but yeah, if I wasn't doing the design, I would still continue to stick blend, let it get thicker so that I won't have to wait to pour. I can go ahead and pour. It can already be thick enough for me to texture my top. Okay, now I'm just gonna clean my stick blender here. Just gonna clean it off, cause every bit counts. And as far as formulating your recipe, like once you decide, once you decide on which oils and butters you wanna use, and once you do a little research about the qualities and properties they add to soap, you could go to brambleberry.com and if you type if you type in the um the butter that you want to use and you read about it in the description they'll tell you the best percentage to use in your recipe so this is a nice trace I was making a new batch of Yoni soap the other day and I really, I was temping at a higher, a higher temperature and it made everything move really fast. And it was kind of nerve wracking. And I, I, I don't like to be, mm -mm. I like to be relaxed. So I like to, by temping at a lower temp, it's gonna make everything move smoothly and give you a lot of time to work and play with it. Like, I couldn't do this yesterday. I couldn't even make a TikTok. It was thickening it up on me. Okay, enough playing, Kiana. I'm gonna split my batter off. Now I'm gonna add my colorant, my rose powder. My rose powder, my rose clay. I'm just gonna add that much because I want this to be a light, oh my goodness. I want this to be a light pink color. Made a little mess, but it's all right. That ain't gonna stop nothing, honey. Keep going. I might add just a little bit more and then lighten it up a tad with some TD. I'm 
Let me just check on this. Yeah, we still good over here. Like you can take your time, but you also want to monitor what your soap batter is doing. Because before you know it, this baby can um, really thicken up. And it won't be as fun anymore, I'm telling you. I'm almost ready to pour, guys. This was very relaxing for me compared to yesterday's soap adventure. So I have my mix here. You see, this is not hard at all, y'all. This is not hard at all. So I'm actually going to pour half and half. And this might accelerate it or it might not. I can't remember. I don't have my notes in front of me. <clears throat> and I'm done stick blending because it's, it's where I need it to be. I can already tell this is heating up, but it's still, it's, it's at a thicker stretch. So I'm gonna mix this bad boy in very fast, get my mold ready and pour because I don't want that pink to sit on top. I want it to go down in to what I'm doing. Maybe when, when that arm start hurting, that's how you know you're doing it right. Gotta hit it with the switch. Switch arms. You know, this look crazy, but <laughs> baby, this arm is hurting. Okay, one good mix. Oh yeah. Let's get it. Boom, mold. I'm gonna bang this on the floor to get the air bubbles out. Just like you make cornbread and brownies, get them air bubbles out. Just like cooking, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna scrape the rest of this out, add it to my mold. Okay, now I'm gonna take my pink. Look at that. See how it's getting thick on me? But it's still gonna be workable. Don't fret, pour it up in there. If you can't pour, scoop it. Boom. 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 Should have got a bigger spatula for this. I'm going to swirl that in with a chopstick. I'm a chopstick. Swirl, 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 swirl. Just to push that pink down and incorporate that pink a little bit. Okay, I still got some more soap batter I need to get out. Everything must go. So this is pretty much, this is pretty much done. The soap making part don't take long at all. It, it looks like it takes a long time when you're watching it on YouTube. But in person, it don't take that long. And it can be fun. It can be relaxing.
And last but not least, some little rose petals right in the middle. Don't need a lot. Flower bird. Just for decoration. Himalayan salt, just a little bit. This is it's really too big for um exfoliant, but it's just for decoration. I'm only gonna put a little. Okay, and this is me, myself, and I. She will be ready in four weeks. Isn't she lovely? Don't this soap make you just wanna take care of yourself? Think about yourself. Self-care, self-love. Baby, take care of you and me, myself, and I. Is here to remind you of that. Take that me time. Even if you gotta force it, take it. You deserve it. You the best. <laughs> no DJ Kelly. Alrighty, my good people. This is the end product. As you can see, I do have some soda ash on the tops of my soap. It does not harm the soap in any way. It's just not very pleasing to the eye. There are a couple things that you can do to prevent soda ash, like spraying the tops of your soap once it has set um, with rubbing alcohol, or you can cover your tops so that the air does not have a reaction with the lye that's in the soap. Okay, so that is a wrap on the video. If you have made it this far, I hope this helps with your soaping journey. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and continue to spread love, never hate. It's more than soap. Peace.